five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I sing. Oh, yes, this is it. This is the ramble. It goes till midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. Oh, yeah. And here I am. See, I I, I made it tonight. Uh, listen, in a moment, you're going to hear an interview with um, <clears throat> Ronnie Bennett. And I did this yesterday. Now, if you think my voice is a little hoarse now, wait till you hear it yesterday. I mean, the reason I didn't do a show last night was uh, I just, I'll be like this. Nothing was coming out. Uh, So uh, 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 here we are, and uh, we're going to do some shows for the rest of the week. The next week, uh, let's see, Tuesday and Wednesday, we may not be on. In fact, I'm sure we won't be on at least on Tuesday, uh, but because I have court. Well, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but right now, let's go in and check in with our old friend and ex-wife. Well, here she is. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. I look, I look forward to this. I really do. I, I, <laughs> You're wearing the same hat you did last time. Yeah, I, uh, I have a shirt to that extent under this. It's a really nice shirt, about 1939. You know. But uh, anyway, I uh, hey, listen to me. I'm I can't I can barely talk. I may not do a show tonight. This may have to run on Thursday because I'm uh, I've got laryngitis really bad. Anyway, so does that mean I should do all the talking? Well, you always do it. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Uh, we had Thanksgiving. Yeah. What'd you do? I went to my son's house in Salem, Oregon. Yeah. And they way did big food. There were lots of people and big food. There was a piece of salmon like this and a prime rib too. No turkey. Yeah. No turkey. Now, uh, this is interesting. This is still hard for you to say that, my son. I mean, yes, you know, yes, because it is. I, I feel funny about it. I mean, I'm just, you know, you just want to identify somebody when you're having a conversation. And I always almost trip over that part because, and it took me a long time to It's been a couple of years since we met. And I think the problem is, is I just don't get being having a son when I didn't raise that person. You yeah. know, I think you earn motherhood or fatherhood. And I didn't. I mean, it's just this full grown person with a whole life showed up, you know. Yeah. So saying my son is, yeah, I, it, it, it's yeah. Not, it doesn't come naturally to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't because, and you never, you, for years, you just put your son out of your mind. Although maybe every now and then you would think, back to him or whatever where he might be and <clears throat> whatever and yeah, all of a sudden I didn't do the work of raising him right. you know I didn't go through all the times kids get sick and you worry about them or they're doing well in school or they're not doing well in school and all of the stuff that kids go through I don't know anything about that I have no knowledge I am ignorant <laughs> and, and that's that's what makes you a mother or a father having been there through all that stuff yeah and I never did. So I, it, in one respect, I feel like an imposter when I say that. What kind of word could we attach to it rather than mother or parent? Because really, it, it, it's an interesting thing that you gave this child up at birth. And then all of a sudden here, how many years later, 78, 79 years later? No, 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 not quite that many. More like 55 or 6. <laughs> Oh, well, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. But he pop he pops back. He, he pops into your life, yes. and and all of a sudden you have to readjust your thinking about yourself and about your yes. life. Yes, I, I hadn't thought to put it that way, but you're absolutely right. And what does it mean? And it's not a relationship that we much recognize. Every once in a while, there's something in a movie about tracking down a parent. You know. Yeah. A, a, 
And that's the most we know about it, I think, from dramatic points of view in movies or TV shows, and that we don't really have a pl- cultural place for biological parents. Yeah, yeah. They, especially biological parents who didn't raise the child. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, um, uh, it, it's a weird kind of situation that you have. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I had, you know, I had a kid too, uh, if you may remember, um, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, it was given up for adoption mm-hmm. and, uh, I always wondered about it. And there was a time <clears throat> when I was working in San Francisco and I had a blessed amount of money. I thought about finding this kid. Uh, because again, he went into blind adoption, which is probably what happened with you, where you, it's hard for you to find out where the kid went. Uh, and I was going to hire a detective to go do it, to go look him up, or to see if he could find the kid. And then I decided not to, because I decided it was the kid's job to find me if he wanted to. But for me to suddenly pop into his life would be ups- more upsetting to his life than him popping into mine. Does that make sense? Sure, it's whatever you feel makes sense. Um, it wasn't something I thought would ever happen because I was told that the records were sealed. Yeah. And that then that was that, that um, they wouldn't be able, nobody, he wouldn't be able to find me or, I don't know, I've forgotten all the ramifications. Yeah. But the yeah. point was, I went through my life thinking that there was no way, and and when I thought about him, it that's the way it should be. He had a family. Yeah, that's Those right. Those were his parents because they did the work of raising him and loving him and taking care of him and all of that. So I was really quite shocked in the beginning. It wasn't anything I ever expected. Yeah, well, also. I, I was totally unprepared. I, I had no idea. I mean, what do you say? And um, Although, you know, I have to say that you know, this happened because of those DNA ancestry type tests. Yeah. And I got an email from him. I thought it was so incredibly wonderful that his first sentence, um, that it was sent to me via that website. They don't hand out email mm. addresses. Yeah. <clears throat> and the first sentence was, Dear Ms. Bennett, apparently you and I are intimately related. <laughs> What a great sentence. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in spite of the fact that all these things are sealed and so on, this new DNA, these new DNA companies have put people together who are parents to, a, to kids and whatever, you know. Um, but I... Well, you know, I mean, with, with me, it's worked out quite nicely. But I can imagine that it wouldn't, that there would be parents who gave their child up for adoption and went on to have a whole other life, and depending on what it is, would not be shocked in a good way. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think that that's, I mean, so, no, I've never seen it discussed anywhere publicly, um, but I think that it has to have happened, you know, and then what? Yeah. I well, you know, I mean, uh, my kid uh, would be somewhere around his early 60s, I think, at this point, you know. Uh, I I, figure, I I think he's Howard Stern actually, uh, but I'm not sure though. No. But it, it 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 I don't know. I just every now and then I do think about it, you know, and wonder. Can't not I don't yeah, suppose. Yeah, you know? but you know, and I had no control over the situation. Uh, she was the, she had the ultimate choice to make of giving up the child as well she should it's it's not you carrying a baby well i tried to i tried to what do you mean you tried to no i tried to say i'll adopt the child i'll take the child on and i wasn't allowed to you know i had no well, say so i'm not so sure about you being a single father i really am not <laughs> uh i think i would have been okay you know i wanted it enough that I would have made it work. But I wouldn't, I don't think I would have had the life I've had. I think I would have been strapped to uh, raising a child and, and, and taking <laughs> jobs and leaving jobs considering the best thing for the child, you know, so where I spent my whole life not having to worry about those things and being able to make my own decisions, you know, so. 
what have you, you know. But that's that's wonderful that you found that. You know. Speaking of... By the way, is he a Republican uh, or a Democrat? Oh, I don't think I should speak for him. <laughs> we get along. Let's put it that oh, way. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of relationships, yeah. Um, after our last recording, yeah. one of the comments left, it, it, it seemed to be particularly so last time, was, had anybody ever told me that I look like Shirley MacLaine? And then I got two or three emails to the same effect that those people seem to think that I wouldn't want that mentioned publicly or something. And I don't think I do. I look at myself now, I don't see anything. But in my 30s and 40s, maybe a little into my 50s, I just want to tell you the story. Um, I did look a lot like Shirley MacLaine, so much so that even I could see it. It wasn't I didn't think it was anything like you would say, oh, that's Shirley MacLaine. It was just a mild resemblance. It was the essence of Shirley MacLaine. Well, hardly the essence of it. I'll (laughs) I'll let her have that. But but every once in a while, someone would stop and say, you're Shirley MacLaine. No, 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 I'm not Shirley MacLaine. So I was working at a TV show and the offices were in, in near Rockefeller Center right. and it was a rotten, miserable winter day and I was, so we decided, a friend of mine, Carol, to go to lunch, you know, underneath um, the street there is a whole shopping area and restaurants and all kinds of things and subway stops. So we could get to the basement there and walk through without having to get wet in the crappy weather there was that day. So we're going along, and it's lunch hour in Rockefeller Center. So even in the middle of winter, you know, there's crowds and crowds and crowds of people. And we're working our way through. We were meeting some friends at the restaurant. And a woman came over and pointed at me, and she said, you're Shirley MacLaine. And I said, no, 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 no. I know I kind of look like her, but I'm not Shirley MacLaine. And she said, oh, yes, you are. Now two or three other people. (laughs) Next thing I know, there's a whole crowd. And all these women are, they're women mostly. And they're fishing in their bags for a pen or a piece of paper or something for me to sign. And I keep saying, no, 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 I'm not Shirley MacLaine, I promise you. I just kind of look like her, not completely. Yeah. And they go, no, 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 come on, I want you to sign this autograph for us and all that. Finally, Carol, do you remember that show, I've forgotten the name, The Nanny? Mm-hmm. The, the, the Nanny was from Queens and she had a heavy Queens accent. Right. My friend Carol was like that. She was... I mean, she was the nanny, the accent, the colorful clothes, everything. So I'm going on and on. No, 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 I'm not really Shirley MacLaine. She finally elbows me and says, Shirley, sign them. We are late for lunch. (laughs) (laughs) So there are half a dozen people who have signatures that are my signature of Shirley MacLaine. But I was surprised because I thought I was long past looking like her to other people. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just that. <clears throat> I think it's amazing uh, that these people didn't take your word for the fact that you weren't <laughs> still <laughs> and, and I understood the resemblance, but then right up close, you would, I didn't think you would ever mistake me for Shirley MacLaine. I mean, it was just this, you know, just like a shadow over well, somebody's why, face. Why would, Shirley like McClain, else? why would Shirley MacLaine so adamantly deny that she was Shirley MacLaine? <laughs> <You know. laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. That's my story for the day. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, it's, you know, um, uh, I... Um, I have a cold, folks. Uh, all right, don't have a cold anymore. This is what happens. Do you remember I used to get laryngitis after a cold? No, oh. but then I wasn't probably paying close attention. You forget you're a hypochondriac. After a while, if you're around you too much, you just kind of let it all go and flow past you because there's always something with you. Yeah, but now I have cancer. <laughs> Jesus See, I told you I had something. You weren't listening. <laughs> all these years. Yeah, all yes. these years. <laughs> you Funny. Know. Well, I, you know, I, I, you know, I have this as my part of my hypochondria. This, this thing that says, "Okay, what is it that's going to kill me?" You know, something's out there lurking. Every morning I wake up. Why I, would you do that? 
I feel the Grim Reaper is standing in back of me with his scythe and his hood going, well, not today, but we're thinking of something. You know? You know the appointment in Samara's story? What? No. Do you know the story of the appointment in Samara? No. Oh, it, it's an old, old tale. I mean, thousands and thousands of years old. And I'm going to get maybe the relationships a little wrong. But um, but a man is walking around in the marketplace and um, and death walks by and uh, does a double take looking at him. And, I'm, you know, I'm going to mix up the story. It's too bad. And I just recently ran it on my website. And um, it... Anyway, the point is, is that death is surprised to see that guy in that marketplace uh, in because he knows that he's coming to get him that night mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be in Samara. And this is in another town. <laughs> and the guy <laughs> had heard about death being after him. And so he went to Samara mm. to avoid it. And there death was. Oh. But and I've got it backwards, I'm pretty sure. But. It's the general idea. You're not going to escape yeah. this, whatever causes it. Yeah. But anyway, you know, so you wonder what, what is it, what is it's going to get me, you know? And, and the doctor says the cancer I've got isn't going to get me. So uh, the question is, what is, you know, I have my heart. And are you shape. still getting up every morning asking yourself that question? I'm going to be a hundred years old and be a hypochondriac. Okay. You know. Do you understand that it doesn't really do you any good because... It's so common with you. It's so every day that pretty soon anyone around you just tunes it all out. Yeah, but I and it drives my wife nuts. It well, really, it drove this wife nuts yeah, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we should get all my ex-wives. How many were there in between us? <laughs> we should get we should get all my ex-wives together and they can talk about what got them nuts about me. Uh, and you would all agree on the hypochondria. That would definitely be. Uh, well, a hard to miss. A hard to miss, yeah. But uh, anyway, you know, so see, listen, I, my voice, this is so much fun. I'm getting, I sound like T Mel Torme. There's an old reference. Um, anyway, so uh, you, uh, you know, you, I'm, I look at you and you look terrific, you know. I mean, for somebody with cancer and COPD. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I mean, uh, well, how long was it ago that you got that? Uh, the doctor saying, "Well, you've, you've got you've got inoperable cancer." Okay, that was, that was a, two and a half years ago. No, that was pancreatic cancer, wasn't it? Two yes. and a half. But I'm talking about re, the recent thing where you, you thought everything was gone, and then you got a report, and they said you have inoperable cancer. Oh, like nobody ever said it was gone. They said that the scan they couldn't see anything on the scan oh okay and that's a big difference oh okay but when, and when, and when that I... given the kind of cancer it is chances are it's not going anywhere you know uh, yeah and uh so you know it's growing but very slowly so i mean it... the bigger problem day-to-day -day life is copd much bigger problem yeah yeah you... um that i I, we were talking before you started recording that, you know, I'm, I'm, I just recently had a realization that I've got to pay attention to that I walk as fast as I used to and then I can't get my breath and I'm heaving to get my breath. I have to do everything slower. And I just, I haven't quite convinced myself, even though it's been several months, that that's how it is. That's how you live now and that's get the, over it and just do it. As they say, that's the new normal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so I'm, you know, it's, it's hard, I mean, especially, you know, when you still live in New York, um, you walk, when you walk down the street, you really walk pretty fast or you get people stumble over yeah. you and push you aside or something. And I still forget now and again and walk that quickly. And then, you know, after a few steps, I can't get my breath. Go, so, yeah. and just... I just, you know, you've got to make yourself understand this is different now and it's not ever going to change. Right, right. Um, I, um, um, yeah, uh, so, I mean, you know, it's just uh, at, at our age, you do find you have things that you have to live with as your, as your new normal. Uh, and I'm probably going to... What, what I'm finding is that even though I understand that intellectually and I'm not fighting it, it's because I... It's irreversible. You can right. only control it to a degree. 
I understand that. I get it. I'm not arguing with that. I understand. But I'm not behaving that way yet. You know, automatically. I, I have a friend who does was doing interviews like you're doing with me on Skype for the show. He's a comedian named Will Durst, <clears throat> who's a comic. And he got word uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, about a couple of months ago, I tried to call him, and he didn't answer the phone. And I kept trying and trying and trying, and then I did a few other things. Finally, his wife gets a hold of me. I call, I call him at, at home, and then his wife answers, and she says, he had a stroke last night. Well, he had a stroke, which in it has kind of like ruined his ability to talk and paralyzed, I think, his right side. And I'm thinking to myself, what would I rather have? You know, something How like, do you know, these things even occur well, no, to you to I think, don't of think that. I would not want a stroke. I think that's, the wor that's worse than just about anything because, especially if you're a performer, it takes away, it just sucks away the very essence of what you do. You know? Well, that's anyone. You don't have to be a performer. Well, I, I, especially a performer. I mean, I don't. Okay, I don't agree. Let's say you can't talk, but let's say you. Uh, I don't know. You're good at some of your violinists. You can still play. You know, or something like that. He's a comedian. He needs his ability to talk, and you know, he's a writer. Needs his ability to write. You know, I. I just. I just said. I, thank God I've got what I've got, as opposed to what he's got. Well, you know, I thought I had cancer. Now I have cancer and COPD, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what you'll get next. <laughs> That's your buffet, huh? Cancer and <laughs> COPD. <laughs> you know, the thing is that it's so far, it will change in time. It's the COPD that's harder to live with than... The, except that I absolutely must take certain pills at certain times of day. Beyond that, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Where the hell? Where COPD the hell? Wait, that takes up all my time. Where the hell did you get COPD? You quit smoking years ago. <coughs> I, I grew up in a home that both parents smoked. So essentially from birth I was smoking. Yeah. Um, plus, I was. it's funny, I just ran across a general interest article about COPD a couple of days ago. Yeah. And it was a lot of people get it from bad air. The air pollution is causes a lot of COPD too. Wow. And um, anything that affects your breathing, people who work with chemicals and don't protect their faces and so on. I was reading your blog the other day and you had some article and I loved it and then I've completely forgotten which one it was. Uh, but it was just something you did in the last couple of days. And was it the one about um, not to what? What did I do on Monday? I don't remember. It might, and it might have been Monday too. Yeah. It must have been Monday. Tuesday was a reader, yeah. um, a it's reader just, story, and today is the um, oh the story in the Washington Post, a story about a book of a British photographer who'd taken a lot of photographs of his very very old mother. And then a book of them, and it, they showed a half a dozen of the photographs, and the Washington Post writer had recently visited his very old mother, so he had some interesting takes on that. And then I rarely read comments except on my own blog, uh, because mostly they're nasty and mean. I mean, just like that's the point, people going online or something. Um, and it was a mixed bag on the story. But several people said, Oh my God! How to what a terrible thing that he took pictures of his mother in that state. What? And what? another one said, "I hope to God my children don't take pictures of me when I look like that." What is wrong with them? <laughs> yes, well, that's what I said in the story, but that's not the one, huh? No, that's not the one. It was. Uh, let me see here. I'm looking at your blog. Uh, my forty-five thousand dollar a month, oh, month inhaler. Right. This I thought was a great piece of writing, where would you talk about your COPD and the fact that your inhaler is costing you forty-five thousand dollars a month? <laughs> that was according to the Medicare website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out, I didn't know this that 
I knew it was a mistake. It took a lot of phone calls before I found someone who could help me out with that. But as it turns out, since then, mm -hmm. um, there are a whole lot of articles on how bad the website is where you can select your Part D drug, you know, your new one for each year or yeah. Medicare Advantage or whatever yeah. that you need to check again. And it's it's they you know Medicare keeps telling all the reporters who call that they that they check the site you know and tested it before they the new site before they put it up, but oh thousands of people are having trouble so much so that some people have shut down their helplines because there's just no way to do it. Right. So many right. things wrong. So I don't know. I'd like to blame Trump, but I don't suppose either. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not it's not cheap of being sick, uh, and uh, but thank God there are other people paying for it. So you know, I'm, you well, know. we're paying for it through well, our taxes. Well, I'm, I'm sure I on my on my uh, whatever treatment I have to go through, I'm going to have one, a fairly decent copay. You know, I mean, um, it just it, the the copay is what I don't get now. It used to be there was never a copay between your Medicare and your secondary it took care of everything and now you got a copay so i don't know. i just i don't i don't understand it like, like well i don't i don't think that medicare was ever meant to be free but it should be reasonable right but all i'm saying is that between the secondary and the medicare it took i didn't ever pay anything and now mm -hmm. i get bills for these you know these small amounts so, Twenty-five dollars here, twenty-five dollars there for the copay, and you go, "Fuck you!" You know, I'm, I'm I'm old. I need to be taken care of. You know, I I paid into the society. Leave me alone. Give me a break. Shepherds you know, when I felt there. like that once, and I understand you have to know to understand this is that my apartment came completely carpeted. Okay, mm -hmm. and I was had a big bundle of clean clothes I'd just taken out of the dryer and I was carrying them into the bedroom to fold up everything and I guess I know a sheet was dragging on the floor and I tripped on it and fell down I didn't skin my knee but oh my god did it really hurt both of my elbows hurt everywhere seemed to hurt and I just lay there and all I could think of is why isn't there someone here to help me <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look and see how old Shirley MacLaine is. She's 85 years old. So she's got seven years on me. Yeah, I was going to say that if she was the same age as you, you look better today than she does. But I, I think she looks perfectly fine. She looks, she looks old, but she. And so do I. But a good, a good old. Yeah, and you yeah. look a good old. And she's still getting work. That's terrific. I, I look like a rotting corpse. But that's another story. <laughs> Jeez, are we going to end on that note? Oh yeah, I like I always end on a on a on a big number. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, you have a birthday coming up? Yes, I do. Yep. Oh, you're not. Are you going to ignore it? Well, I'm not going to ignore it. I can't ignore it. It creeps up on me anyway. You know, uh, but I'm uh, I'm going to be 80 next month, and that's uh, a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. You know, every time I, I worry about, you know, let me just say this quickly because we're running over. Ah, right, fuck. There's no such thing as running over. It's the internet. Screw That's running right. over. It's always more room on the internet. You know. Uh, I, uh, I, the other day, I, I, I came to the most, the best, you'll love the, the mindset I got into about this cancer thing. I said, why do I have it? And I was reading about it, and it said, Basically, people who get to be older, they have a higher incidence of prostate cancer. It's part of getting old. And I said, this is because I'm 80. You know, if I had died at 75, I would have never gotten it. So what's the trade-off here? You know, the good news is I made it to 80, and I made it to the age where I'm going to get something like that, and they'll take care Even of it. Even more important is those extra years from average to now yeah. is that you've been relatively healthy and been able to live the life you want to live. That's right. So, you know, I mean, so I'll go through this. It'll be a little annoying. It'll, uh, uh, 
you know, take the female hormones and start to cry a lot and get, uh, the, I hear men get, uh, what, what is it, the heat thing? The uh, uh, heat wave, uh, what is, uh, hot flash. Hot flashes. Um, grow it's little, so long ago for me, I can't remember my, the my, name. <laughs> my, breasts may gr my breasts may grow a little bit. I may gain some weight. From the hormones, if I but they if I stop taking them, everything reverses itself. So and it's not permanent. So and uh, the radiation, which I'd like to go through the faster radiation rather than the longer radiation. And and once that's over, I'm home free, you know. And uh, hopefully uh, it won't recur, and I'll be I'll be fine. And something else is going to get me, so I can still be a hypochondriac. Oh, that's the part you don't want to lose. Huh? I don't want to lose it. <laughs> you want, enjoy it. I want my tombstone to read. See, I told you I was sick. Just you know. how about? Just I told you so. I told you so. A little more subtle. <laughs> hey, dear, we've run over, but I love running over with you. This is Ronnie Bennett. And she has timegoesby.net, a blog which you should read about getting to be all the cacas. And um, uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. It'll, and you'll already be 80 by then. <laughs> no, not, no, no, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, yep. you're right. Yep. Okay. I'll All see, right, I'll see take you care. Bye-bye. Five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, we love talking with her. <clears throat> That's Ronnie Bennett. Um, as you can hear, my voice is a little better than it was in that interview. Not not much, but somewhat, uh, and uh, that's that's good. <clears throat> As I gargle and gurgle and do all those things. Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, let me open up the Skype lines here. Uh, we will. Uh, we as I said earlier. <clears throat> oh boy, I'm trying to clear my throat out a little bit so we don't have to. Where am I? Before we get going, ah, here they are. Okay. I'm going to need these. These are my cough drops, so I don't cough in your face while I'm doing this show. And um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, let me open the lines here. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Ah. See, I've still blown my nose. Ooh, ooh, whoa. My eyes are tearing. Here comes, uh, here comes uh, the Kathleen. Uh, here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, let me see here, Kathleen. We uh, got push the button for the three, and there we go. There she is. Hello, Kathleen. How are you? Hello. I'm uh, good, but you sound puny. Well, I, I have been. I am puny. Uh, I, I, you should have heard me yesterday. Well, you heard me yesterday, but you should have heard me later yesterday. We recorded that yesterday. I said, I'm going to be uh, 80 next month. Well, it is next month already. So It is. Yeah, let me just say that. Okay. Here comes uh, Josh Wheeler. Let me see here. Josh, uh, let's see here. He's in the number three spot. So uh, we, uh, oh, there he is. Oh, okay. I don't even have to put him in there. He's, al already, uh, he's already been in the number three spot before. Uh, turn on your camera. Uh, Josh, there we go. Okay, uh, excuse me. My eyes have been tearing like crazy, and uh, I've you know, it's been a week I've had this goddamn thing, whatever it is. So, oh uh, well, what the hell? Hello, Phil, how are you? Hey, I went to a uh, banquet last night. I uh, came home, I said, Well, let me listen to what went on last uh, that yesterday and uh, nothing posted uh, you know I guess it uh, I hear now you were sick yeah I just but, I was, uh, no way I could do a show I couldn't talk I had no voice left yeah so uh, you could have mimed it I could have mimed it but I'm not, yeah. I'm not all right to do that <laughs> excuse me if I wipe my eye a lot tonight folks but it's tearing and it's eh. so, I don't uh, know what Huh? Is it cold in New York or snowing or what's it's going It's cold, on? it's snowing, it's, uh, you know, it sucks. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. But anyway, so I won't be here next um, Tuesday and probably not Wednesday. I have the trial on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I have to be up at 9 o'clock in the morning each day. 
So, up or there? Th- huh? Up or hmm. there? I have to be there. At 9. At oh. 9 So o'clock. you got to be up a lot earlier than that. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I, I, uh, I, so I won't do a show on, uh, on Tuesday, and I probably I won't do a show on Wednesday, but because I don't have to be there on Thursday at 9, I might decide to do a show on Hello. Wednesday, but I'll, I'll figure that one out. Well, later on. It'll be Phil free. I'll be on a plane. Where are you going to be? Um, Maui. Coming back. Oh, coming back from Maui. When are you leaving yeah, le- from Maui? I'm oh. leaving Saturday. Oh. Okay. So you, and you're coming back when? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Night. Wednesday night. Yeah. Okay. So you'll be here for the Thursday show when I'll be back <laughs> doing the show. Most likely. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know. And then who knows how many, how much I'm going to be out with during the treatments and stuff for this. When does it start? I have no idea. You know, I, all I know is I see him on the 16th, so I guess we started soon after that, you know, yeah. one way or another. So, so you've who, decided on the kind of treatment you're going to go for. Well, I know what I would like. I don't know what he's going to suggest, okay? But, so, well, Don't they usually do what you want? They're done. Make a decision? No, I mean, they'll probably offer me several options, and I'll yeah. probably, you know take the best one. I, I want the one that takes the least amount of time. Well, that's the hammer to the head. Well, no, that's, uh, that's either the, uh, the cyber knife or the, or the seeds. The seeds is yeah. overnight stay in the hospital, maybe. Some yeah. places I've read you actually just go home, you know. Yeah. So, um, well, I like the overnight stays in the hospital. They give you chocolate pudding and, uh, you know. Yeah, but you also got somebody in the same room with you who's an annoying Actually, you got, is Marjorie going to be there? No, no. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I had uh, all the heart, heart operations and the, and the uh, prostectomy. I, I had room by myself. I guess they said, we're not going to stay with that guy. Yeah, right. Well, I, I assume, I assume that that's going to be the situation, but I don't know yeah. that that's going to be the situation, so. You know, I don't know. I mean, we're thinking ahead of time. We don't even know. He might just look at this whole thing and go, not time for you yet to have a, anything, you know. Well, you know, Let, let's just when wait David a couple, Hayjack, Let's wait a couple of months and see what happens. Hello when there. When David Hayjack there, had, a, Tony. Uh, uh, had an operation Let me say hello uh, for to the Tony. prostate. Hello, Tony. Yeah. Why? Hello, Tony. And the uh, what happened was uh, because they gave him some radioactive something or other, they kept him quarantined. Uh, I'm wondering if the seeds, no. which are radioactive, no. Uh, no. They, they don't no. let you next. No. Us, no? I how many times well, why do, did they how many times do I have to say no? No. Oh, well, why did they quarantine Hayjack? He had a whole different thing. Because he's an asshole? He had, or, or, he, had you know. a whole, he had a whole different thing. I don't know what he had. He had uh, proton therapy. Well, proton therapy, they don't quarantine you. So he had something a little more severe than that. Yeah. But uh, 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 the crud, he had the crud. But no, no, the seeds. Uh, you're you're radiated, and they tell you don't get near pregnant women for a couple of months, mm-hmm. and don't get near young children for a couple of months. I remember they. He said that they were giving him his food through through a window, and maybe he was in jail. And then they were, <laughs> then and then they were running really fast. Yeah, yeah. Here. you know, <laughs> he said he was confined for like ten days or two weeks. Yeah, I I. I don't know exactly what they did to him. He's radioactive. But that's what he said. It either worked or it didn't because we haven't heard from him since. Yeah, I know. I know. Every <laughs> once in a while, I see a cat post from him on Facebook, but uh, that's, yeah. that's about it. Yeah, yeah. In case uh, Kathleen doesn't know, there's a guy named uh, Hayjack. David Hayjack. David Hayjack, who had prostate cancer, and they they gave him some kind. He was in a foreign country. And they gave him some kind of a treatment with radioactivity. And they had to put him in a room all by himself, blocked off from the rest of the world. What, for two weeks or something? Yeah, 10 days or two and weeks. they fed him through a hole in the wall. They just shoved yeah. the food in and, you know. Well, you know what? When I had a cousin of mine who passed away, and he was young, like 42. So I was unable to attend the funeral. So I told my older brother, who was... Um, not but 25 miles away i said can you go to matthew's funeral and represent us absolutely so my brother goes to the funeral he comes home and he goes i know what killed dad what 
Uncle Earl told me that when dad was in the Coast Guard, he was a dental assistant. Hmm. And he was the one doing all the x-rays before there was any protection. And of course, my dad died at age 37 of a brain tumor. And, you know, I hate to say this, but I got so fucking pissed. And I said, oh, well, you know what? They knew the repercussions. So as far as I'm concerned, all of, go ahead, Phil. Hey, that's why they probably have those x-rays Drake. once every year. Yeah. Exactly. My friend, my friend Drake was a, de- was a dentist. What is and, yeah. yeah, and he uh, he managed a dental firm that was uh, in the 70s and early 80s that bought the cheapest equipment, World War II uh, 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 dental equipment, and the x-ray machine was across the hall from his office. Well... Because they saw like a hundred people a day in this office, and they had right. five, six, seven dentists. Uh, uh, what happened was, after he retired, he's uh, seventy-five now. Uh, after he retired uh, and moved to Florida, he got throat cancer. The throat cancer, they gave him uh, radiation. It fucked up his jaw. He has a titanium jaw. He ha- he he can't talk. He writes things on a pad because he lost his voice and he can't swallow so he's been on a liquid diet for about the last eight years and uh leave it to you phil it, to give us an uplifting story when i'm facing yeah, prostate no, cancer thank, thank you you know thank but uh and you know he was a, a really good looking guy and he still has great hair but he won't go outside great because of the guy, operation what is, what does great hair well, matter if you have a titanium yeah, fucking jaw I know. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, he's a little self-conscious, but uh, he was want, a dentist. Yeah. He was a dentist, and he and he and one of those World War II X-ray machines uh, was across the hall from him. And you know, he didn't smoke, so well, the only thing I can imagine is Phil, the same Phil, thing that they, Kathleen's they, talking about. They, they didn't know in the, in those times yeah. that, that 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 was going to be a problem. They learned that it was. Yeah. Uh, but some people, sure. they learn from people who are unlucky enough to die young because of that, like Kathleen's father. Yes, Tony. You know, this is funny. Every time I go to the dentist, I was always a little nervous, like you get trepidation. You know when they give you the, one time he was getting ready to give me the x-ray, right, the girl? Mm-hmm. They put that heavy thing on you, right? You know what I'm yeah. talking about? And I'm like, what do I really need this for? It's supposed How's to protect you from team? the radiation. What about the brain? Exactly. Hey, Come all on. they care about, if you notice, with that apron is 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 protecting your junk. Yeah. Yeah. I, does it go over the junk? Yeah, I guess yeah. it does. It went over my whole chest, like, I, and it's kind yeah. of heavy. It's just, what do we need this for? I it's mean, it's almost like a waste for me. You probably do oh. not need any protection at all because the amount of radiation you're getting in one visit to the dentist isn't very much. You know, okay. what their problem is, is they have a lot of stuff, you know, and um, uh, they get a lot of every day they're doing, as you say, 10, 20 x-rays. Right. So mm-hmm. that's why they get out of the room, move to the next state and then push the button. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know they wear these <laughs> pins. And it's that, heavy. Uh, I, you could feel it. It's kind of like intimidating. Like I, kind of little, I, I, I used to get nervous over it. Like that's why when I go for my second thing. And the lady says, oh, I think you get extras. No, you don't. I got them six months ago. And you're not giving it to me again. Just look in yeah. the mouth. Yep. You get you me know, once. The x-ray techs uh, wear these plastic pins, and there's something on there that measures accumulatively how many joules of radiation Rankin. or whatever it is. Ren- that Ren- they... Rip, Phil, it's Renkins. Renkins, What's okay. It? Jules. Uh, Renkin, Renkin is something that I uh, use in my hair. No, Phil is a, Phil's a guy who knows everything and really knows nothing at all. Okay. Well, thank you. I was just talking about the plastic pin. You're, you're such a fucking asshole sometimes. You know, <laughs> he, gets, he got a little mad in that. No, he, Phil, you know, Phil, no, I'm not Phil, mad. Phil, I just, Phil, I just Phil, think, Phil. You know, he let, let's not ruin me. my he let's not ruin my just, reputation. Okay. I'm an asshole <laughs> all the time. All the time. Yeah. You know, but the guy can correct somebody without having to put him down. That you know that that's you know show us you know you if you got a correction for something. Be nice well, you're about so it. knowledgeable about everything, Phil. Well, I'm talking about a little plastic fucking pin that these people wear, and it measures. I, I never knew the a man. Radiation. I never knew a man this stupid who knew that much. <laughs> you right. Not kidding you. 
Okay. You know, if he's in you his act, I'm kidding you. Oh, yeah. well, thank you Quit being sensitive. All right. Well, yeah. Sometimes you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't ruin my reputation. I'm an asshole all the hey, time. Hey, you know what? Listen, let's end this on a positive note. You know, in in lieu of my mother's passing, if there's anyone that has given me the best advice and some of the best insight, it has been Tony. You know, Tony, when it comes to messaging, for the most part, I don't message people on Facebook. But oh, you I know message what? a lot of people. I do. Yeah. <laughs> You're okay. you, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kathleen, have you allowed Tony to message you? <laughs> oh, my God, yes. Uh, uh, wow. uh, 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 Kathleen, that's a bad idea. You have to threaten him with bodily harm if he ever no. messages, messages you again. No, no, no. no. I love Tony. Mm-hmm. Because she's t- like my big sister. Well, have like, you got yes. Yes. Right. Have, have you messages got, have, from Tony. <laughs> oh, I, oh, yeah, geez. but I. You want Don't to laugh, mess with Tony. I swear I will kick Did you like my asses. Yeah. Have you Thank gotten you. Have you gotten any of the cartoon pictures yet? No, I saved that for you. Oh, Alan, oh, 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 oh. Well, wait till that starts coming. You'll want to yes. find out where he lives and kill him. Okay. No, I, you know, he goes. He goes. He goes from Hoffa. Sean and I. I go, yes, Sean. Was, when we fly Hoffa. out to New York, mm-hmm. who do you want to meet, Alex or Tony? And this is Sean, uh, because Tony has comic books. Yeah, I could take him to Midtown Comics and a couple of haunts. Oh my God, he would. Yeah, he would go crazy with me for the afternoon. Give him to me afternoon. He would. Oh, I could take oh, him to the yeah, pizza place. Keep Tony Jim Jimmy's universe. I'd be all over yep. the place. I know all my way around, so I can get there in and out with the kids. I don't know. We don't know enough about Tony for you to trust your child with him. You know? Oh, oh I take my, my niece God, really? Me. I take my niece with me, too. How would be that? That would be How old are you now, Tony? I, uh, I just turned 50, but actually, that's I can't believe it. 50. Really? I hate it. I hate it turning 50. I hate it. Really? I did. I didn't like it, Alex. What? Why I really you? didn't like it. I'm being Hi, honest. Hi, Jeff. Why did you, you hate turning 50? You know why? <sighs> A lot of my friends are messaging me. Oh, it's just the numbers. As it is, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm a lot like you to one degree, Alex. I sense like half my life's over. What's gonna? I, I just have that trepidation. Like I can't play basketball no more. I can't do certain things I used to do, and I don't like getting yes, old. Yes, you can play I don't basketball, like getting old, Tony. Alex. I don't. Oh my God. I mean, I don't mind it. I'm, 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 I'm warming up to it because I have that feeling like, you know, I don't have. You know, you're seeing people pass away, and now I'm like, God, I'm. Fi- I don't feel it mentally though. You know. I didn't get as I didn't get laid as much after I was fifty, but then again, I didn't get laid as much before I was fifty. So that, you did know, you have a hard time turning changed. fifty? Like when you turned, did you like, oh wow? Like I you feel know like what, my- Alex. You know what my son said when you said that? He what? said, "That poor man." <laughs> Yeah, I'm afraid of growing old. I think a little bit, but I'm. It was, I'm, it was only I'm, a joke, Sean. I did okay after fifty. Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said hallelujah. <laughs> I think when when we knew each other, I was what? My, I was over fifty. No, yeah. you were fifty six. Because it was what nineteen ninety six. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I was fifty six. Anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, 50. I'm turning a hundred. Uh, not a hundred. Uh, eighty. That's a big one. Turning eighty. I'm turning eighty, and uh, <clears throat> they're trying to steal my junk from me. That's that's <clears throat> what I'm now facing. You know, <laughs> family they are not. Well, no, I they, I they let you keep the junk, but it doesn't work very well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got pills. Yeah. The junk. In other words, it goes yeah, from being something that's junk. fun to a minor annoyance. It's well, it's good for peeing. Junk. Yeah, it's still good for peeing. Yeah, I still think you should, <laughs> Phil. You should have listened to Alex and got a second opinion. Can you imagine if they made a mistake and they didn't have to take it out? No, it was my choice. To have what it he taken he did out. what he wanted to do, and that's that's really. The it's patient true. should be the ultimate arbiter in all of this anyway. You That's know, true. If you tell your doctor, no, I don't want that operation, then he won't do it. You know. What's that Bobby Brown song, That's My Prerogative, or something yeah. like that? <laughs> yeah. It's break dancing yeah. in the new office. <laughs> Is Bobby Brown the guy that used to beat the shit out of his girlfriend singer? Yeah, Whitney. Yeah, used- Whitney? Yeah. He killed her, I think. Right. Well, maybe that was the only way he could get her to shut up. I don't know. Anyway. 
Stop hitting those notes. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> she was good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be, yeah. Oh, I'm going to be. Ha I'm going to see the doctor on the 16th, and the 18th is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Alex! I'm getting myself a throat lozenge. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? That's a good thing. It is. I mean, think you know what? You're shocked. Alex, for 80, I'm not just saying this. I see some of my family members for 80. They, they're not even like. I'll tell you though. I, 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 li I listened to programs with myself. Oh, just five years ago, six years ago. <laughs> And I was much better then than I am now. I'm not that good anymore. You know what the fault is? Five, six years ago, you had good guests. Today, you got the <laughs> citizens panel. No, that you know, wasn't it. Theme. You know what? You, you, you're not working with a lot. <laughs> that wasn't Four it. Four guys and a broad. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was just sharper back then. Really, I, much. Sharper. But we all get it. Everybody is people. sharper, you know, when they're younger. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You know, except we don't know as much. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Josh. Josh. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel youngster. about getting older? Yeah. Why are we asking him? He's just a young punk kid. Uh, I mean, I I guess I don't really feel one way or the other about it. That's our Jeff. <laughs> I agree with him. <laughs> You know, the other day at Costco, so I'm at Costco Chill Freeze. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, the first place I usually start out at is the sort. And so there's like 80 pallets, and we have to throw, it's called throw in the product. So most of the time we're throwing cheese or turkey or meat or whatever. And so some of this stuff ranges from 20 pounds to 70 pounds. Wow. And so I come in Tuesday and I look up at the board and who's number one? I am. And then all the guys are like being so respectful to me and they're like, holy shit. And I said, oh, nothing worse than being outsorted by your grandmother. Because yeah, probably one of the guys goes, how old are you? And I said, I am 55. Now, you were number one at throwing shit? Is that what the... I was the, number one at sorting all this stuff onto the mm -hmm. pallets. And for the most time, I'm only there for two hours, then I get pulled to my regular job. And so they didn't know whether to be horrified or fascinated. Well, she, she's she's number one uh, in, in, uh, in uh, throwing stuff, but the one who beats her to it is a chimp who's there. <laughs> very uh, funny. Very good at you know, there's midget tossing... And there's a there's a fish market up in uh, Seattle, I think, uh, where they throw the fish. That's the that's the thing. Yeah, that's throwing. where I graduated high school. So go figure. Do, do you know about that fish market? Yes. Uh, it's a public for some sort of fish market where it's they're famous yes. for throwing the fish. I, yep. I don't know, you know. Well, I, I, not, I think I was there about a hundred million years ago. Well, it's another yeah. night of really heavy intellectual discussion. Yes. On the Rambo. Okay. What's the temperature no, no, no. in Brooklyn, Tony? Well, he's in 40, Queens. I think it's like 47 degrees. I was Wait, in Brooklyn. Hold on now. a second, Tony. Uh, Echo, Are you what's in the temperature in Brooklyn? Brooklyn? I'm only 10 minutes away. 37. Oh, it's 37. Yeah. My mom's oh, old neighbor. You know what it is in Walnut Creek right now? It's 54. <laughs> really? Wow. That's not yeah. bad. Brooklyn's got you beat, Phil. Where, where are you again, Josh? <clears throat> uh, I'm in uh, Ohio. In Ohio. Hmm. What's the temperature there? Do you know? It says 32. Wait, what, what town are you in again? Yeah. I'm in a, r a really small, like, farming community called Asheville, Ohio. It's about okay, okay. Hold on a second. miles uh, south okay. of Columbus. Hold on a second. Uh, Echo? What's the temperature in Asheville, Ohio? No, I don't want to know what the temperature is now. No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, Echo, what is the temperature in Asheville, Ohio? Sean! Now, in Asheville, Ohio, it's 34 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go. 34? You know what it is in Maui right now? 76. He would like it to is go. a balmy 57 in Tracy. But they're probably going to get hit with a storm any minute, no? Can I say I that a, 
There are two places that I've hated oh. a lot in my lifetime. Oh, I know one of them, Florida. One is one is Miami. The you other hate one, Miami. Yes. The other Police one, shoot out there today. Tony Montana. <laughs> the other one, the other one <laughs> is Hawaii. You don't like Hawaii, do you? I can't, I can't stand Hawaii for a couple of Why? reasons. Number one, well, to begin with, the sun is relentless. You can wear a shirt and you can still, you'll still get a burn. Okay, oh, that depends how, on the kind of shirt. That's how to REI. How, how relentless it is. Okay, oh, and then and then, yeah. it's that fucking Hawaiian music. <laughs> oh, my mom likes Don Ho. They play it. I mean, that stuff is so disgusting and vile. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> I like uh, it. Uh, you, you like it, Phil? I always think about really? blue. You Hawaii. know, by going to Hawaii, I get uh, I'm I'm trapped on an island with liberals. The whole fucking place is full of liberals. And you want to move there? Well, yeah, it's beautiful, but so is California, and it's full of liberals. So, what are you gonna do? Every everywhere that's nice is full of liberal, liberals, well, but you know they they're all fucked up. In in Hawaii, the school system's terrible. The kids don't get an education. The public school systems are absolutely useless there. Yeah. But yeah. it's that hot then. Wow. It's not that hot. Right now, it's 76 degrees. And uh, tomorrow, it's going. Uh, Saturday, it's going to be sunny. Sunday, Sunday, a little cloudy on Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, sunny. And the highs of 87. So I'm I'm happy. Yeah, uh, that's that's where I want to be because right now it's fifty something in Walnut Creek and I don't like it. I'd we have nobody. Watch, we have 80. nobody watching tonight. And no, I, no, it's really. They low. all watched last night. Yeah, no, I guess I because I wasn't on last night. I, I'm I was sick. I'm sorry. I was sick. Fuck you. <laughs> the show must yeah, go on. You know what, what the fuck is this? Tuesday's show was hilarious. I Best was show I ever it. heard. Uh, uh, yesterday's show, Wednesday's show, best show. <laughs> Best show ever. Well, Tuesday show was Tuesday show was hilarious because all of a sudden there's no Alex, but then there's Jeff and I. So, Kathleen, tell me about your son. (laughs) (laughs) I had no idea, but in the meantime, that it was recording everything we said, and then there's you. Because there's at one point where I'm telling, yeah, my son, he's you know, he's like, why are these women? Why are these girls at school dressed like tookers? And Alex goes, oh, yeah, whatever. Well, anyway, what I did is I put together a combination of the two shows. Uh, right. And, and there's a there's a kind of a what we call fixed I, version. Uh, oh. And so uh, it uh, was uh, that was a clusterfuck. Nothing was working. Oh, it was hilarious. What I figured was Skype changed their, um, you know, updated their program. But it only would work if I went and uh, rebooted. <coughs> rebooted the machine. Oh boy! Am I gonna be? I should. I should have made myself tea tonight instead of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, that's the way I go. <laughs> Take some medication or something. So, uh, is it Saturday? Sunday? We're going to see uh, uh, Pamela if, and Jeff. If you're still alive. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I figured Put some I, honey in that tea. Everywhere I you look, know, they say that I will that I have a hundred percent chance of a five year survival rate of, on this cancer. Okay. Uh, yeah. Beyond that, what do you they say f- about six? <laughs> well, no, they after that they say they don't know. But if you're older, you'll probably be dead before that. And I'm going fuck you. <laughs> You know, that's great news. Oh, yeah, I got a five-year survival rate, but if I do survive it, then I'll have it, right? You know. They're telling you that just before your birthday, right? Oh, yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. I want a 10 to 20-year guarantee. (laughs) What, on me or on you? (laughs) Yeah, on you. Come on. A 10-year guarantee means I'm going to be 100 years old. You're going to come take care of this slobbering, dribbling... Peeing wow. in his what did pants, I tell you? dumping I mean, in his pants. Tony person. needs the work. I need the work. God, my mom lives ten more years. Oh, oh yeah, oh, hey, 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 Tony, just look at me as more work. That's what you I, should do. I'll do it for free. Hope that I I'll live to be a hundred, because then you can come clean up my shit. Uh, <laughs> a subscription to depends. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't worry. I was helping my mom in the bathroom before. You know. Yeah. She blew a fart. I says, Mom, really? The little woman blew a fart. Like, you would have thought, like, a truck driver. It's I amazing. Said, she's got to be kidding. She starts laughing. 
Well, she's not. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure she's this. not the world champion like Marjorie. Okay. It's a loud one too because she puts it depends on. Marjorie will do them, but she tries Traps to deny it. them. You know, oh, like, she I, I, what? I that. didn't do that. Did you hear something? I, <laughs> she uh, laughed. You know, and I go, we blame uh, the dog. Uh, you know what to do. And she gra uh, grabs the, the, the air freshener and sprays yeah. it. She got it by the side of her bed, and I have it by the side of my bed. She's laughing. I'm going to get my I just blame I, the dog. I rip louder ones than she does, though. That's where I'm the champion. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, how you doing, Kevin? Okay, I'm surviving. Yeah. Well, Did you get a biopsy today, Kevin? No, no, no. I'm just going in for the old uh, probing a cigarette next week. What do, you, oh. what do you mean probing a cigarette? You know, I'm going to go get uh, checked. He's oh, going to get the finger. He's, he's going to go do, get checked, honey. He's going to feel around in there and see if there is anything. <laughs> I see. Well, you know. Uh, yeah, they should give you flowers or something, you know. Yeah, you know, when you're done, you know. <laughs> yeah. I Instead mean, of a sucker, a cigarette, you know. You know I mean, Let's go outside you know, and smoke. If sweet. you're going to do a reach around, at least give me something, you know. Yeah, really. God, I wonder, you know, I've often, said, uh, I've often had the joke, you know, when I go to the urologist, I wish I were gay and then I would enjoy it. But yeah. I wonder, does a gay person enjoy going to the urologist? I don't think so. I don't think anybody enjoys going oh, to the urologist. No, I would think not, yeah. I wonder if gay people even enjoy that kind of sex. You oh, know? yeah, I they mean, do. Oh, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Brought to you that's by not what, that's Every time I yeah. tried it with just, a woman... Just, <laughs> they weren't that happy about it. Well, no, Just go to one of those I've sites had, and look I've it had, up. There. I've had certain Bill, women. Find out. I've had certain women, and I won't say who they are, who have enjoyed that particular predilection. <sighs> you know, and uh, 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 it's uh, you know, but but you don't do it unless they give you permission. You yeah, know? you don't want to suddenly surprise them and see that your eyes pop out of their sockets. No, <laughs> and if they're like Native American, they say "wahoo," which is. <laughs> Which means wrong hole. <laughs> <laughs> too far north. Yeah, too yep. far north. No, but I, I, I know, uh, you know, gay guys enjoy it. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's you know, what they I tell you, say. lately I've had so much stuff shoved up, up there by, by my urologist that I don't really give a crap anymore, <laughs> you know? As soon as you go in the room, you're in the stirrups, huh? Yeah, well, no, yeah. I, just, I just go. go. <laughs> He's got his pants on already before I go in. First yeah, of all, stirrups? Well, they just bend you well, over. Well, first of all, it was the, <laughs> first of all, it was the <laughs> finger that I had to get used to, but now I have to get used to that whole goddamn probe, you know, sonogram probe that goes up there. And then, then when they do the biopsy, they decide, oh, we'll also yeah, get a no, staple I gun and shove it up for. there, you know. You wonder if there's an easier way to do it. They got a little it. slot for a quarter where it'll I'm, vibrate or I'm anything? I'm beginning to think, <laughs> I'm beginning to think, but with all that they do, like, that you could fit a Sherman tank up somebody's ass, you know? <laughs> hey, my son is so wide-eyed, I told him, dude, something to look forward to. And he's like... <laughs> And if the doctor says, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you, you're a liar. You know, the only time I don't trust the doctor is when I he says, it. this is going to pinch a little. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have been going I'll have to say, I'll have to say that the biopsy, I didn't really feel much of anything. I just uh, My mother know. said it was oh. tough as out. She felt the pressure, like you said. My yeah, sister a little was pressure, anyway. a little pressure, you know, but yeah. it's like a staple gun pump. But once the first one happened and I was used to what it was, it wasn't any problem, you know. Have you ever had one of these, uh, 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 Jeff? It's probably the one thing you haven't had. No, mm -hmm. no. I've done, first of all, I've designed and developed a whole bunch of surgical staplers. Really? So it's all your yeah. fault. And, uh, <laughs> they... they they don't hurt, so I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Know. You the, guys they, are, the only yeah. thing is, so we're, a little, we're a little concerned. suspicious of your sta your surgical staple guns because they say swing line on them. <laughs> you know, the, I, these staple guns are they putting them out of business with crazy piece. glue? You know, they use the crazy oh, glue now for yeah, a lot it's, of wounds. Yeah, it's one of the things that's. But still, staplers are very well used. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love staples. They're good. 
Do you love staple guns, do you? I, I love going to staple guns. Hey, uh, tell your son to get ready for all this shit, by the way, oh, yeah. Kathleen. Yeah. I wish I was 14. I mean, he's, I'll tell he's, you only, <laughs> he's only 15 now, so it's, he's got uh, like, you know, at least another 35, 40 years gosh. before this stuff starts happening to him. But Yeah, shit. I remember when I was, uh, went to the doctor. I was in Monterey. I was going down there to get my last biopsy, and there was a kid in the waiting room, and oh, my God, he was scared shitless. That's it. What, he was going to get a biopsy? Uh, he was getting something. I don't know, but he did not want to be there. He was with his mom, Who, and he was... Look, Look, he was I got to tell you something. This is a fact of life. Nobody, mm -hmm. but nobody wants to go to the urologist. No, no, number, that's right. Number one, that's they're right. the weirdest bunch of doctors you'll Especially ever meet up with. Especially a man. Yeah. <laughs> they're the weirdest with bunch of doctors girls? you'll ever meet up with. And when you finally do meet up with them, they're more weird than you heard they were. Well, you actually, know. mine was really mine was really nice. You know, he's a real well, cool I have guy. I one now that's pretty cool. He drove motorcycles, and he yeah. talked motorcycles and everything, and they tells you to turn around and drop them. What the fuck? He's not even good to know you. Yeah. I used to have a doctor. That was years called foreplay. And he wasn't a year. <laughs> I used to have a doctor years ago, and he. That's wasn't... what it felt like, Phil. Wait a minute. Did he pinch? I had a doctor years he ago. He looked a bit. Alex is talking. Uh, I had a doctor. And then, and then after pinch? that, it was just this. I always ask okay, questions. Is everybody through? I had a doctor years ago. You're supposed to know what that means. Who I would go to. And every time I would go to him, this is when I was younger, I was in my 30s, mm -hmm. uh, he would say, okay, one more checkup, and then he'd stick his finger up my ass. Okay, before you leave And then I would go, and then i come back the next time to see him, and the same thing, he'd have me bend over and stick my, his finger up my ass. Finally, about the third time this happened, because I, I understood this was for prostate, and who cares at 30? Why does he got to keep sticking right, it? Right, and I he, said, I said, He what? said he's a dentist. I said, yeah. I said, why do you keep doing oh. this? And he says, you like it, don't you? Oh, shit. I said, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? He was taking advantage of you? No, he wasn't taking advantage of me. I don't know. I felt like I was a... I felt like I was a skater at the Olympics, and he was the doctor. <laughs> <My God. laughs> well, it's, good. It's, it's bad when he, when he, yeah, when he reaches for the glove and then grabs the lube and then what, says, wait, wait, Kathleen it. is losing it. Yeah, yeah. she's loving it. She's I'm loving it. She, we know what she has to go it. through. There's you nothing know, funnier than fingers up the ass jokes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we know what a, you know what a woman has to go through. I mean, she's having a ball with this one. I'm a chicken. And her son is over there in the corner cringing. She's got to unfold him. Yeah, yeah. Can you see Phil in the doctor's office? He'd probably be. I can put some rugs down in here. Do I get a break? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Just drop him, Phil. We're not going to talk shop now. <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I hate all the doctors. I ask him what school they go to, like where they graduate from. If I don't think the school is good, I tell my sister, well, you know what? Ask, she uh, takes me to the doctor. Don't ask any stupid questions. Yeah. Well, where you graduated from, that's a stupid question. <laughs> you imagine going to school for that? Yeah, but I want to make sure you went to a good school. What kind of movies do they watch? You can look oh, that shit man. up on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, especially the movie degree hanging on the wall. We got a couple of items here. If anybody wants, speaking to of assholes, this will mm -hmm. get our numbers up. Where are you people tonight? Why do I even do this? I like this your show? doctor joke, though. Thing is that after we do the show, we get like many hundreds of people watching the reruns, you know, so that's why we do it. I'm sure they're like, what in the hell is wrong with these people? <laughs> We got fed you, you want to talk about oh, Biden fat shaming? Oh, case, or, it, it, or oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. In case, in, no, let's not do that yet. Oh. Um, he deserved to be fat shamed. Uh, anyway, yeah. we'll get to that later. Um, you never fat shame people. You even got on me about it. What, about fat shaming? Yeah, I pulled something off the AP uh, in the studio that was uh, like some 600-pound guy that they had to cut the door open to get him out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I didn't uh, find you that said, no, funny. I'm not. I didn't huh? find that funny, but you're a fat fuck. Anyway. Ah, oh, fuck you. <laughs> that, you know, he's calling me a fat fuck. Just uh, two years ago, he was he was sporting a 40, 50-inch waist, right? Give me a 50-inch waist. No, I saw those pants you held up on the air. 
42. Those things could 42. have been made by Ahab the tent maker. Well, don't worry. That's all coming back once I take the hormones, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you wrap my mother in them and send it. I hope you and I'll throw tell away you, the that, pants. that hormone <laughs> therapy is not going to be cheap because you know how much your hormones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about a hundred dollars a pop. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know how you make a hormone? Yeah. Don't refuse to pay. <laughs> refuse to pay her. That's the joke. <laughs> Boy, I could make you laugh at anything tonight, Kathleen. <laughs> and she doesn't want to see, have anybody see her laugh. She puts her head below camera range. She's ashamed of her laugh. Uh, you're not going to be talking about uh, if you lose that court case. Uh, they, sure. There's uh, the deal is the Supreme Court is going to is uh, uh, queuing in on homeless crisis crisis whether they're uh, they have the right to sleep on the sidewalk. Now, if you lose that case uh, and the Supreme Court goes against you, you might have a problem. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. I want to. I'm getting to the age where I just want to be a burden to everybody. You know. Right. Yeah, already you are. You <laughs> uh, current Nielsen ratings. Did you see this? No. Where's Gabnet? Uh, number one. No. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> CBS for the last eighteen years has won what they call um, sweeps, which is the ratings they take four times a year. And that's what they base their advertising rates on. So they always put always the best shows on during sweeps and all the specials and the stuff and, you know, to kind of amp up the ratings. They've won 18 years in a row. And this year, this last sweeps, they were beat out by NBC. Really? Yeah. What shows did NBC have on in comparison no to CBS? Idea. <clears throat> it wasn't by much, okay. Yeah. Total viewers for NBC was 7.786 7, uh, million. And uh, CBS, it was 7.494 million. So that's like a diff difference of about 300,000 people. You know. well, Bill O'Reilly gets that. Uh, in or adults, used... at 18 to 49, though, which is the prime demographics, uh, Fox was uh, number one. NBC number two, ABC number three, and CBS number four. Mm. But in old farts, NBC was a two three, Fox a two two, and a CBS a one five. So whatever. I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah. Right? The uh, you you used to have the highest ratings in San Francisco in the morning, uh, uh, eighteen high, to thirty five. Eighteen to thirty five. Yeah. Yeah, you were a six share at Camel. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, that was like I, I three did. times as much as everybody else. Yeah, I did. Pretty, I did pretty well. Pretty good. Uh, also did well at Live One Hundred Five too. Uh, you know, we were not the number one show overall. That was uh, KGO. KGO. Which we found out wasn't the truth. Well, we found once out. they gave people people meters. Yeah. You know, I had a people meter for two years, and I could have, uh, uh, you know, set it up by plugging it in, and GabNet would have been registered if you did whatever it was that you needed to do. There was some signal that you had to incorporate yeah. in your podcast. Yeah, and uh, then I could have gotten you people meter. Uh, yeah, my sound. Findings. My sound is a very loud fart. And then it uh, gets the people meters going. Um, Television Hall, uh, Academy Hall of Fame, yeah, has announced five people who will be inducted into the hall. Cicely Tyson, Bob Iger, the head of Walt Disney Company, and Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. Who's the other two? Also be inducted Geraldine Lay Layborn who helped create Nickelodeon and founded Oxygen Media, and veteran television director Jay Sandrich, whose credits include the Mary Tyler Moore Show and Golden Girls. Is he still alive? I don't know. I don't know if he's alive at all. Uh, so anyway, so those are, those are the people who are going to be honored. Uh, they missed me again. Now I, I started watching that Norman Lear thing, uh, The All in the Family. Oh, uh, well, he, he's 96. No, it's not good. You know, uh, the one they with, did was, way back when with Woody Harrelson and Marissa yeah, Tomei. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Now. Yeah, Melissa Tomei. She, she wasn't bad, but Woody Harrelson didn't Harrelson. really come across. It was a terrible Harrelson. show. It was a terrible yeah. show. Yeah. 
Uh, let me see so, here. For that was a big deal. Spotify, mm-hmm. who, by the way, our show is on Spotify, if anybody really gives a shit, uh, named its most streamed artist of the past 10 years, declaring that, who do you think is the most streamed artist of the decade? Barry Manilow. Uh, and this crowd would never know. How about, <laughs> let's, let's ask Josh. Josh, who do you think? Uh, like music stream from them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's probably like Beyonce or Taylor Swift, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. Well, think Ariana of, Grande. Think, think again. It's Drake. Beatles? It's Ooh. Drake. Who's yeah. Drake? I See, saw exactly. Oh, the movie's <laughs> Who's Drake? He makes, What's Drake? He makes cakes. Uh, oh, Drake's cakes, yeah. 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 Uh, I never heard of him. And then, Even uh, my son was like, eh, Who do you think came in second? This is going to make you vomit, too. Who came in second? Ed I can't Sh- remember. I saw the results yesterday. Ed but I can't Sheeran. Remember. Who? Ed Sheeran. Eh. Yeah, oh. yeah. Wait a minute. Next. Do, you, do you even know who Ed Sheeran is? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, followed by Post Malone. Who the fuck is Post Malone? Yep. <laughs> This is a fix. What did Weinstein set this yeah, up? Next. Okay. Eminem was like fifth, wasn't it? Now is one that actually Schmoody mentioned. A few Ariana moments. Ariana Grande. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Followed by Eminem. Yeah. 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 You know when the when the uh, iPod first came out, I bought one for each of my daughters. Uh, and I got them a card from Apple to get them some music. Mm-hmm. And my youngest girl said, oh, well, I can I can get 50 cent uh, uh, downloaded. I said, yeah, but they're a dollar. They're a, it's 50 cents. It's 50 right, cent. but they're a dollar a piece. I said, why would you why would you download 50 cents if you have to pay a dollar? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's that right. A well, it's pronounced, it's pronounced 50 cent. 50 <laughs> Always or, or Always. just now? Always. Always. Oh. Supposed Fitty. to be. I think he's given up on that, though. So uh, I yeah. Keep yeah saying, he goes by his name now, doesn't it's he? It's not Fitty. It's Fitty. What's his yeah. name? Don Drell Johnson? I can't even I don't remember know. now. Drake, I think. Yeah, it's Drake. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ariana Grande. Dante Williams. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Well, I, wait a minute. I can look up. Uh, what, uh, what, what, what were you talking about? Uh, um, Ricky Sent. 50 cent? 50 cent. 50 cent. But it's a dollar on Apple okay. music. Yeah. 50 cent. I uh, agree. His, his real name is uh, Curtis James Jackson. There you what go. Whatever. The, the third. 30. The third. 50 cent. Yeah. So, anyway. Anyway, so. CJ squared. Okay, I, I, here's a story for Phil to take up on. CNN has been hit with a lawsuit alleging that the cable network defamed a member of Congress. Oh, uh, Nunes. Oh, yeah, Nunes, yeah. Representative Devin <laughs> Nunes of California, now spoken ally of President Donald Trump, filed suit against CNN Tuesday. Allegedly, the cable network defamed him when it reported on allegations about the president and his representative seeking information from Ukraine officials that would raise suspicion about the presidential campaign of Joe Biden. Uh, this uh, is the third or fourth they lawsuit say that, that he's filed. They don't have that much yeah, well, money he, to have to part out Wolf Wolf Blitzer to do it. They're to gonna, it. They, he can keep trying to sue. I don't think he can sue, Phil. Uh, nah, well, maybe he can sue. Well, no, that's right. He's no. a public figure. He's a public fi- and not only a public figure. He's a uh, he's a he's a public uh, nuisance. No, he's a public uh, 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 whatever. You know, he's a yeah, he's a official. government official. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, marinara. Oh, knickers. Well, so you know, I think I think trying to sue somebody is just it's just going. That may be a publicity thing. Yeah, I'm sure uh, it is. It, it, and it may be a nuisance suit. You know, he files the suit. They got to respond. Uh, it, it's a it's, Nunes suit. Yeah. It's a nuisance Nunes suit. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Oh, excuse me, I have to wipe my eye. It's been dripping like crazy. Who's, who's washing dishes? What What's happening out there? Are you running a restaurant on the side, uh, Kathleen? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Kath- 
how to clean the dishes. <laughs> what do you think about this, uh, uh, Josh? I mean, uh, uh, Devin Nunes, who is pretty much an asshole. Um, it's not because I dislike him, uh, but uh, he's pretty much an asshole. Uh, uh, he, Give me it, just a second. I got a call coming in, actually, from my work. Just a second here. Oh, Sorry. Oh, oh, okay. What is the paint drying? <laughs> paint spill on aisle 10. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway. He I actually had to go to Sherwin-Williams today. <laughs> You really? Yeah, I, bu- I bought sure. a pint. Of, I bought a pint of paint, so that's going to keep Josh in in diapers for a long time. You know? A pint of paint? You didn't even get a, a gallon pint. of paint. I only needed a pint. It was to for a customer's quarter round. We had to match it. A what? Uh, match the. We were putting in a floor. Yeah. And we were putting quarter round. It's a. It's a. It's like a small piece of baseboard yeah. that goes against their baseboard, yeah. and uh, I had to paint. It, had to have it painted the same color as his baseboard. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, so you got the right color. Yeah, oh. incredible white. Incredible white. Oh, yeah. Well, she's back from doing the dishes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now you know what it sounds to me like a racist white supremacist. Uh, name to to for Sherwin Williams to call that paint incredible white. You know? Dill, when I first bought my house, I painted my walls plantation white. Oh. Home Depot. Oh. Thank you. And and so you were racist because you were totally. putting yourself on the and the plantation. Yep. And now they're Navajo white. Totally. Navajo chop. Yeah. <laughs> My son goes, Mom, you're racist. She right has now. a ho- she has a home with a <laughs> swimming pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it was raining yeah. here. We, you know, we had some puddles. Yeah, and she has a swimming. I have pool. a cement pond. She has a here cement. Crazy. Pond. How expensive that is critters? that to keep up, though? That that's not cheap, is it? What? A pool. No, it's it's not expensive. Really? Solar. You got solar? No, you know what? I used to have solar, but for some reason, the way uh, my the bottom of my pool is painted, I don't need the solar. It it's during the summer. It's like ninety six degrees. It's one hundred color seven in uh, in Tracy though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and I guess my PG and E bill averages about eighty five bucks a month, and my house is twenty one hundred square feet. Do you know what mine is every month? What during the summer it can get as high as uh, five hundred. Damn. Gee, oh. yeah. Con Ed likes you. Well, I got a lot of electricity in this apartment, although I've gone to mostly LED bulbs. Okay, but uh, what costs some money during the summer is when we have to turn on the air conditioning. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. my house, all the bulbs are LED, <clears throat> and last year I had a new roof put on my house, and it's white, so it it uh, deflects. Yeah. So what? What? Uh, so, uh, uh, but during the summer, you have air conditioning in your place. Uh, this last summer, because I have a white roof, I only ran my AC about three or four times. So <laughs> really? for the yeah, average, yeah. my AC was 85 to 90 bucks a month. And in Tracy, it gets well over 160 degrees. Hey, listen, you know, I'm paying Con Ed rates here in New York. You're paying PG&E rates. If PG&E yep. is, that, is, that, uh, is that cheap... Uh, yep. God bless them. Let the whole state fucking burn down. Exactly. You know, well, at those you know, rates. They keep raising it, and uh, PG&E is going to go bankrupt. Well, they are bankrupt. But uh, if the government takes it over, it'll really be fucked up. Oh, and wow. during the winter, because, you know, for the most part, my son and I are either in the fam- the family room kitchen and so I have my fire going right now, so my PG&E will be eighty-five to ninety dollars. What? Mm. My PG&E is more than that, and I'm only in a two-bedroom apartment, and hey. and uh, with one wall air conditioner uh, that you know I rarely use. How about your PG&E, Kevin? Because they're all PG&E. Mine they're all out there in California. About, 
anywhere from seven to fifteen bucks a month. Yeah. Oh, you got nice. your solar? Yeah, I got solar. <clears throat> and uh, so, do you own the solar, or yeah. do you? Uh, did they put it in and they get? No, the... I I bought it and owned it, and it's about pay, it paid itself off about six months ago. Nice. And then I pay a true up bill about a hundred bucks in February. And do you sell What's some a of true that? up bill? It's it, it's the balance of what you sell back to the PG and E over the yeah. year. So there's a balance because you never you know, there's some that you sell back and some that, you know, you oversell. Yeah. And then they average it out over the year and then in February they even that all up. Huh. So there's some months that I don't even pay a bill. They get a zero on my bill, and then some that are fifteen bucks, and some that are seven bucks, and some that are five bucks, and wow. and That's then over good. the How- year it comes out. You know, they they true it up over the electricity. It's mostly gas that I'm paying. For. Tony, who pays the electric bill in your house? Me and my brother rotate each month, okay. Monday, month. Okay, so what's your electric night. bill like? You've got Con Ed, right? Actually, yeah, we got Con Ed. Actually. Downstairs by us, we usually get an average, I would say, like 130, 140. And upstairs by my mom's apartment, which I'm in now, it's like less. It's like 100 Mm -hmm. or 90 because she only has – we have two air conditions. But she's usually in the back room a lot, so I'll put a sheet up to keep the air in the back. We actually put the sheets up. I thought the sheet is what you put over her body. No, no, I can't. So it keeps you know, the air conditioning. Oh, hey, everybody, that. get this. So it's probably like 120 bucks a month on average. A haircut, huh? Got a haircut. Who's it? All three of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I was up in the 150 range before the solar. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's pretty or good. 50, 170, depending on air conditioning and stuff. That's hot in your area. In Hollister, it gets hot. It's, it's about the like same Monterey. as this is is it cheaper to fill with the central air? I was going to ask you guys that. Because Shecky has central air. I think he said it's better than central air because you can moderate the rooms. It's yeah. a bowl. Yeah, it's okay. central air, but the problem is I got an upstairs, downstairs, and it's it's the shits. Yeah, it also d- it depends on what kind of air conditioner. They've got these ones that are both heaters and air conditioners, and yeah, I forgot what they call them, but those aren't very efficient. And, Phil, uh, they're ones that you can just turn area. on, like heat this room or air condition certain rooms, and have the other parts of the house not really. It that's called the whole zones. House, yeah. oh, okay. That's that's a zones. It depends on how big your house is. Yeah. Oh. I wonder what Josh is talking it's about. Look at that. Eighteen hundred feet. He's not quiet. It's, so it, it, it's it's a paint emergency. I know Why do you always think the worst, Tony? I hope he's not fired. What? Well, I got fired in Key Food once for knocking the bottles over. I never forget that. I was so happy to get canned, Alex. <laughs> the guy just put his head down. Tony, you're gone. Thank God. The <laughs> only way you can get fired from this job you got now is your mother dying. Oh, God forbid. No, no, oh, no. Well, uh, you wouldn't be saying that if you weren't making money off of her. Okay. You're right. I can't deny it. I love it, but not that much. I'm yeah. joking. But I just Margaret, the best ticket yeah. I ever had. I what you do she when she, said. if she dies, and it's going to me, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. When God wants her. When God wants her. Hopefully not too long. Do you think, do you think God really yeah. wants her? I mean, do you, you know, do you wish that on God? I mean, do you believe in well, God? He's not ready for her yet. Believe me you, when I tell you. Do you think God you. wants to take your job away? She's doing the rosaries every night. I says, I says, Ma, he's not ready for you yet. Believe me, yeah. you got time. <laughs> yeah. He should be asking for cake, coffee. Come on, he can't handle her yet, Alex. <laughs> rubber feet. <laughs> rubber feet. God, <laughs> rub my feet. God damn it. I said, Daddy's not ready for you. Let him have some fun up there. Because he's out of night. He wants you know a little more time away time? from you. Yeah, yeah. He goes, your mother's a good woman. Too good for me, he says. You know what? He says, she'll be asking for flowers when I'm dead in the ground. I'll have to push them up through the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Your father is, sounds I mean, like yeah. he it was... It was like polar opposites. It was funny. Really? It's you like know, when my different. mom was in hospice and she was sick, you know, my friends were say, would say, you know, who is there for you? And I would say, Tony. They were like, who in the hell is Tony? And I said, well, you know what? He's one of those treasures... You guys would love to steal. So his name It is- was hard to go through, right, Kathy? Because I went through it. It was tough. It was it the was- hardest thing I ever had to do. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Like I was at work the other night, and my sister-in-law came up to me and she just absolutely lost it. I mean, you know, for the most part, I'm able to keep everything I'm under wraps, but there are times where the grief is so immense yeah. that I get it that. just happens. Yeah. Like last night, I was a little down the other night, and I just was thinking because of the holidays. My mom was upset. So yep. you think of the people who are gone. That's why I said when you get older, I see what you're saying. When you lose so many people, yep. I wasn't like bad. And when a couple of my friends were messaging me, I really didn't want to talk. And I just yep. kind of laid down. And I said, you know what? I have a lot of so many great memories. It's a good yes. thing. So yeah. We see, on the other hand, I, my mother uh, uh, was 100 years old. Yep. And, I, I, you know, she I didn't have to see her much. Uh, she was at the uh, Jewish home for the aged, and I yep. didn't have to see her much because I could go every three or four weeks, and she'd think I'd been there the day before. Mm. Yeah, you know, it wasn't I wasn't doing anything by being there, you know. Uh, and, and she remembered me. Uh, that that yep. never stopped. But uh, yeah, she remembered you were the guy that came every three weeks. Well, no, I moved to I'm New York. Old. I moved to New York. I had to yeah. take a job in New York. Right, I had to survive. Yep. And uh, I was worried that that would be a problem because she was in that home. And uh, I then went back and I saw her and she thought I'd been there the day before. You know? It's not easy to get into the Jewish home for the aged. Huh? Uh, my ex-wife's grandfather donated a shitload of property that mm-hmm. after my ex-wife dies, the property all goes to the Jewish home for the aged. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that was one way that he thought he'd get in, but I think he died before he needed it. I, yeah. um, you know, I they were very good to my mother. I, I, a very wonderful place. Did yeah. I take you over there? No, Kathleen. No. no. Oh. Oh, yes. I did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was pretty good. You know. Uh, but my, you know, my what happened? I always like to tell the story because it tells you what it is with old people. Uh, boy, I'm not gonna be glad when this show's over tonight. I'm not well. <laughs> I'm still sick after a week. I can't Maybe believe it. Maybe put a little Vic's under your nose. That's what my mother does. Yeah. Uh, do you know Vic? Who's he? No Vic. Oh, my oh, mother oh puts I see. It under your yeah. Okay. So when you Vic breathe, that I thought you, just, I thought you just, got those patches now. You stick on your clothes and you can breathe there. Yeah. Well, good. I love that. I love the smell of Vic's, Vic's patches. On, Vic's. The smell of Vic's on an old person is is. Is a is an oxymoron. Okay, I like it, I it's like Ben Gay. Yeah, yeah, I like right? that too, Alex. And you I'll... you like that, Jeff? When you you have Vicks, and then all of a sudden everybody's going, yeah, the old guy's got Vicks on him. Yeah, yeah exactly. we can, it smells like they Vicks. can always tell. You know, the kids but stink from it. Who cares if it works? Anyway, whatever. Anyway, like what I, she used to rub Vicks all over me. No, I yeah. do with my mother. I do with my, my, my mother. Is I, t- some I, Vicks. You know, I told the story you. before with my mother. I <laughs> Put some Vicks on them and give them a, a Sprite. <laughs> with my mother, what I did Seven up. was, uh, I got to put some drops in my eyes. Uh, with my mother, I went back, I told her, I said, I'm, I'm, uh, I was back, in, I've been out in New York. And she, and I said, no, I have to go to New York next week. And she said, oh, well, say hello to my mother and father. Oh, you said that. Yeah, she knew. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, and so I said to her, Mom, you know, your mother and father have been dead now for years. Oh, my God. And she started crying like they had died Gina. yesterday. Oh, my God. I yeah. remember you told me. You had to break the news to her that they were gone. You should have just went along with it. No, but I didn't know better. Oh, you know, man, I, you, you know, know you, I just assumed, you, you know, that, you know, that she would just go, oh, yes, okay. You know, yeah, of course, mom and dad. No. You know, my, my oh, wife's uh, yeah. mother lives, like, right down the street from us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get to see her often. Pam goes and sees her probably every day a little bit. But she has dementia also. So yeah. It's kind of tough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and so it's things like that, you know. So I learned that, that that's one thing you just never do. You never tell mom, you know, that her parents are dead, even though they've been dead for God. Hey, want me to tell you? I'm going to tell you something now that is blowing my fucking mind, okay? What's so they got ans- Ancestry.com, okay? So my Marjorie name decides name. we should get Ancestry.com, and it comes back and tells us we're both Jewish. You know, <laughs> you know boy, I really no, needed that. Now, all of a sudden, they start sending you stuff. 
uh, here's this thing and this thing about your 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 father and about your mother and so on. Mm. So now I go in there, and they've got my mother, my father, mm -hmm. and then they have three children listed. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Three children like listed. Well, let me see if I can find it here. Um, we were going to do this to my I dad. Have, we were I swap. have ancestry, we and I have my family tree going back to 1100. Wow, okay, wait a minute. Cool. Hold on a second. So mm. uh, let me see. Uh, let's, let's see if it comes up okay here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, let me see here. Where is uh, where is my? Well, wait a minute. Where's my tr where's my family tree? I wanted somebody else's family tree here. Somebody's peeing on it. Though. I want my family tree. Uh, Bennett Schwarzman, okay. Schwarzman. Well, well, let me see here. I can't find it. Huh. That's interesting. Um, let me see here. Tree over tree. Schwarzman family tree. Okay, here we go. All right. So we go to Alexander Schwarzman. And we go to search. Let's see here. Search. Does it have it that way? Yeah. Uh, here it comes. Alexander Schwarzman. Resident Township, San Francisco, 1935. Says, I can't find it now. But what it had was, it had me and two other kids who were born before me. And I was listed as really? their brother. I'm listed as their brother. <gasps> wow. You think you got a brother out there? You didn't print it out? I, I didn't print it out, no. I'm just trying to see. Maybe say, they oh, killed the other two. Tree search, no. Last well, you know what? A lot of Hold times a with these trees, there's a yeah. lot of mixed up bullshit. Yeah, I'm beginning to think that may be what happened. Yeah. It has that my mother died in California at 100 years of age and so on. Uh, but I'm trying to see here if they have uh, where they have the rest of it. Sure, it wasn't his brother? <laughs> or, or, no, uh, you know. no. Zach? His brother died many, many, many years earlier. Or cousins, uh, but they you know. uh, they had two people listed, but both with kind of um, oh god, I'm I wish I could find it. I wish it would come up. It, it something else came up here. Um, I wish I could have did my room. Like, I wish it came my over. uncle's side of the family were Castelluccios from yeah. Italy. Yeah, oh. and once they left Italy and came to America, yeah, they were the you know, All of a sudden, they disappear. <laughs> My grandmother was adopted from Italy. She got taken from a family they gave her up. She never knew her mother. So she got taken in, and then they came over. We wish we could have gotten her to see how far back from because she never knew any of her family from Italy, from Naples. And so what that, was like her a whole, last like, name from here? Gone. Okay. What was her last name from here? I have to ask. It was, from Joe's, it was with an M. My sister knows it. I can't pronounce it. It's a long Italian name. McDougal. I got it. My sister knows. No. I'm sure we could have swapped her. But she, that was like 2001 she died. Yeah, this this isn't listing anything, uh, the ones I'm looking at now. But it, it did have a thing where it said, uh, I had two, a brother and a sister. And I'm That's going, nice. uh, you know. It's I was, just a tease. It, no, I think it's a mistake. Yeah. You know, I think it's yeah. a mistake. It's got to be. I mean, uh, I've never heard of my father ever being married before my mother. And then it said my mother was the, was the mother of these children, too. Oh, okay. So it's a mistake. Yeah, that might be getting you. Yeah. Any, anybody else here do Ancestry.com at all? Well, you no. know what? I'm going to research that, Alex. My sister used it, so she liked it. I have many a friends and family that... Okay, so I'm the keeper of our family tree. So I have it going back to 1100 in wow. England. So from 1100 on, I have it. So I'm going to look up Schwarzman and I'll let you know if I find anything on it. Yeah. So yeah. maybe one of these other kids could buy your mom that headstone she's been. Oh, shut the fuck oh, up. Well, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, that's something I feel very guilty about. What? And now that I'm, now that I'm facing my morta now that I'm facing my mortality, I'm going. What if I die and I don't put up a, a tombstone? Well, they can at least split it with you three ways. Well, you know. Well, I figured it was kind of selfish because they didn't get a third plot for me. You know, I mean, where am I going to be buried? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, you're, you're due. You're due a uh, military burial. Alex, can't you go with your mom and dad? 
no, I can't. There's no room. Cemetery. There's no room. See, there's room in my dad's plot. We made sure. Yeah, I know. I know. That's what parents do when they think ahead. I'm going. Do you ever me. see these plots where they put one on top of the other? No, it's just you know. Say. Yeah. yeah. They what? do that multiple times, not yeah. just one or two. Yeah. Well. Alex. I'll okay. take care of it. Will you take care of it for me? Okay, because listen, yes. a girlfriend wants to cremate me. <laughs> yes, I'm good. Sunday or you're what? You're what? Next week. Yes. Hey, you know what's really <laughs> creepy? Yes, I don't my, want to be cremated. Who knows if I don't need this body? My ex-wife has a mausoleum. Her family ha yeah. have a uh, a mausoleum, and it's big. You know, it, it's it's got like room for fifty, and uh, it, it, it's really creepy. I mean, it's all what? marble. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got to New York really that I had live reads on a regular basis. The live reads are those. Commercials that you do live, they have the copy there, and you read them, okay? And one of the first live reads I ever had, and this one always got me every time I read it, about it started out, why settle for an ordinary earth burial when you can get an above-ground mausoleum? Yeah. <laughs> and I had to read that with a straight fucking oh face, God. okay? You weren't allowed to fool around? No, yes. no, no, wasn't allowed to fool around. That wasn't until I got to San Francisco. And advertisers oh, had to know that I would fool around with their ads. Yeah. Like that's my, creepy. My favorite, my favorite ad was for the Vermont teddy bears. And, yes. I, I, and I did one, I did one one day where I said, yes, the Vermont teddy bear. There's nothing like the Vermont teddy bear to say to your girlfriend, I'm sorry I had sex with your friend. <laughs> hey, you know, on the mausoleum one, you couldn't say, hey, people are dying to get into this place? No, Phil. I, I wasn't a hack <laughs> One or two like bedroom. Yeah. Hold on a second. I have to blow my nose. Talk. All right. <laughs> yeah, the work emergency's over if you want to get back to disparaging Republicans or something. Do they yeah. clean up yeah. the paint spill? <laughs> <laughs> they had a uh, massive power outage, and they're having problems. Where? Did it? Ooh, oh, 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 it's your paint. In Ohio. The plant. Apparently one of the the big lines that feeds the back of the plant, the 13,000 volt line, one of the, something happened to one of them, it fell off and was laying out there on the ground and caught the grass on fire. And they got it fixed, but the bunch is, anytime the power goes out in a place like that, you're going to have problems for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. yeah and when they turn it back on, when they turn it back on, it hits so hard. It messes all kinds of stuff. There's just they got a lot of problems. So. Yeah, you gotta slowly turn it back on. Yeah, you gotta but, let the power company know that you gotta turn it back on too. Well, they had to turn it back on because it was outside on the pole, and then that big line there. There's a great big switch gear for that one outside, so I'm sure they had to turn it off. And then it's a huge one, so when they turn that one back on, that's like the full face gear and arc flash yep. suit, all that. I'm sure that was a big. That was some stuff that who, we who, used. We had to call turned, the power company and tell them that we were turning it yeah. back on. So who it, turned the gotta, screws on that wire? They, you know, they, they got to, to put it on. Start, start dipping the city. <laughs> now, let, let, since we only have about five minutes left, and that way we can keep Phil to a minimum, uh, uh, let's talk about for a second because he mentioned it. Joe Biden's situation with one of his people at his town halls or whatever. Oh, wow. Just the liar one or the fat one? Because oh, uh, there was also one that he, the, the liar one, he ch he challenged to a push-up match or something. Uh, Did he? Yeah. I didn't hear yeah. that. I heard him just get very mad and yeah. say, you know. What oh, happened? I wasn't watching nothing what? today. Oh, so all that's not. been debunked. It was one of these people, one of his town halls who, what about you and your son and the improprieties and what you did with the yeah, Ukraine? That was it. Yeah, And he said, that's all been debunked, and I won't even talk about that, you know? Um, and um, uh, then Nancy Pelosi got really pissed today. Oh, that was... But he called her a bad Catholic. Well, he well what it was it, this guy was from this guy was from they said Fox News but he was really from Sinclair Broadcasting the big right wingers uh -huh. and he asked her the question uh, well how do you feel about that you've been people have said that you hate you hate Donald Trump 
And she went into a, just a rage and just said, really? I am a staunch Catholic. We are taught not to hate people. Oh. I don't hate Donald Trump. In fact, <laughs> I have on many an occasion prayed for him. And she said, I, I don't like that, and that was, it's wrong of you to say, you know, that I, that I would hate Donald Trump. I don't hate Donald Trump. I just hate that he's in office. <laughs> well, I, 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 you can dislike, you know, she dislikes what he does and how he does it, and perhaps even thinks that he is misusing his office. But that doesn't mean you hate the person, you know? Yep. Uh, and, and so I think she had a right to go after him. But then they came back. He, I think it was, it was Trump that came back with a, with a tweet or something about her having a hissy fit or something, and it was so sexist. You know, like a woman gets, gets this way, you know? <laughs> What? One of the, he should write. Was she having her period? Oh, she hasn't had periods any longer. You know. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, and, yeah, and then the uh, the other one was uh, I'm looking for it. I can't find it right now. But uh, Joe Biden, uh, uh, he was um, the guy said you you know you put your son in a uh, in a job in the Ukraine yeah, that's, and, that's and so the guy, forth. Same guy. Oh, it's the same guy. Yes. Is yeah, that the guy I, I, fat shamed too? They say he fat shamed him, but he was yeah, a fat. And, and he it, was a fat fuck. Well, yeah, but you know they usually are. But the I, other, I, yeah, I the absolutely other... believe in fat shaming, and here's why I believe in it: that people who are fat are living an unhealthy lifestyle, which is going to kill them early, ra sooner rather than later. Well, maybe and, it's an overactive wait, thyroid. Wait, wait, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I'll give them that. Okay. But the point is, the point is, then go to a doctor and take the pills for the thyroid. The point is that when you sit around and go, no, you don't look fat, and the person, you know, is like, looks like the fat lady at the circus, uh, <laughs> you're not doing them any any good no, by no. not fat shaming them. You know? I, I don't really understand how it no, was if, they, if there was no... If there was no Walmart, there'd be no place for them to go. I don't understand how it was classified as he fat shamed him anyway. I mean, he didn't say the guy was fat or anything. He called him fats or something. He did? No. I, well, the guy said that he was too old to be the president of the United States, and he said, I'm not too old. I'm in really good shape. As a matter of fact, if you want, we can drop down and do a push-up contest right now. And, I mean, he also said, how is that saying you're not too fat? old to vote for me or something like that. Yeah, and what the other guy said, you're a fat ass. Yeah, I'm trying to think. There was some one, one other thing that was like that. that I'm trying to think about. I yeah. just told him he's full of malarkey, corn pop. <laughs> well, you know, off my lawn. This no malarkey tour is really a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, I think him running is a bad. I'm idea. 80 years How old, and I don't. I'm 80 years old, and I don't use the term malarkey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He wins the uh, anachronistic award of the well, day. Well, uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel sent his guy out into the street to ask people on the street, do you know yeah, what malarkey means? <laughs> and the, uh, Man, this is all one so guy, cattywampus. The last guy nobody knew. It. Nobody knew what it was, but the last guy did say, yeah, it means bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> uh, how about uh, one other thing? How about in Iran, a thousand people were gunned down because of protests. They were protesting, and yeah. the government mm -hmm. turned on their people and and uh, and uh, killed a thousand people today. A thousand and people. One thousand. Are you sure? Yeah. Let's see. Sounds here. like a bunch of malarkey. Sounds like a bunch of malarkey. Uh, let me no, see. No, here. It was on the news this uh, this 1, morning. One thousand. Yeah. People uh, killed in uh, dead, Iran. Dead in Iran. Uh, mm. Uh, protesters. Iran. Well, I don't have to put all that in. It'll either come up or it won't come up. Uh, over a thousand possibly killed amid Iran protests. That okay. sounds cattywampus. The U.S. says oh. 1,000 killed in protests. Okay, so I don't necessarily believe that. And the U.S. is moving 7,000 troops to the Middle East. Uh, you know. Well, it's a little on... late, isn't it? Well... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, with this new, all these uh, things that are coming up, and the you know, the governments are turning. There may be a, an overthrow in Iran. Hmm. I know. thought he was pulling everybody out of that part of the world. Uh, well, he wasn't pulling, putting them in Syria, but he was putting them in the Middle East. You know. 
No, he was so pulling seven. him out of the... <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Out of the Middle East as well. <clears throat> yeah, well, when you have a thousand uh, people, uh, you know, uh, innocent people or uh, civilians killed yeah. by their own government, there's obviously something going on. Yeah, I would yeah. say so. Yeah. And, and it's smart to move some troops there uh, because... You know, it, it, there might be a real atrocity. The you know, I don't know that the uh, government of Iran has much respect for life. Well, neither does this country. So, well, they're not gunning down a thousand people in the street. Not streets. gunning down people, but they are killing people. Oh yeah, Trump yeah. didn't want to be the the world police. Well, well, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to know, be the world police. Can't but let these atrocities happen. No, he doesn't like atrocities to happen in a country that he's got something against. Money. Meanwhile, he lets atrocities go on in many countries that he has nothing against, like Russia, for example. Oh, so this is a whataboutism? Not no, this that, isn't a whataboutism. Uh, you want to discuss this is, the, you got, the no, positive no, this, influence this, of sending the troops? This is... Not what aboutism. This is be con fucking consistent, you fuck face. You can't hey. be consistent. The world isn't consistent. Excuse me, Sean. I didn't mean to say fuck. Hey, uh, where's yes, Tony? Where it, Tony? He he's letting us. Mama. He he he's got one of those. He got one of those urges. Maybe, uh, maybe his work had an emergency too. Yeah, 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 yeah checking yeah, the bunion. Book emergency. No, he uh, he had a sudden urge to smother his mother. So. Uh, oh no. Sean thinks it's hysterical that you say fuck. Really? Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, he just said it. Boy, it's easy to get a laugh out of him, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. Did you, did you, did you, uh, you I, I bet you raise this kid as goofy as you are. As goofy as I am, as goofy as you are, as goofy as we all are. Goofy is as goofy does. Yes. How about yes. Saudi Aramco? It's going to be a one trillion dollar plus business. Uh, yes. You know, isn't that amazing? How many? Uh, one trillion. Huh? Business is worth that. Okay. One trillion dollars. Who could ever have fathomed one trillion dollars 30, 50 years ago? You I know? saw a movie that was made uh, in the '30s in which a guy said, "Come with me, and I'll earn you thousands. I'll make you thousands of thousands." <laughs> Right. <laughs> and I went, that's yeah. a billion, you motherfucker. But they didn't have that concept when they made the movie. Yes. Yeah. Remember, uh, what, was that, what was that movie? I want a ransom of one million. You know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The well, mini me. I made it through yeah. the show. I hope I feel better I, tomorrow I than I do eat. right now. It, it seems that all I'll colds fight. get worse in the evening. So, anyway, well, let's play the theme. <laughs> There's our jaunty little theme, and we're going to dance ourselves off. Come on, everybody, do this. Come on, everybody, do this. Everybody, do this. Everybody, nobody wants to do this. Boy, you people are not fun at all. <laughs> Tony's going to be surprised when he comes back, and there's going to be nobody here. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. I appreciate it. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you, uh, um, uh, 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 Jeff, uh, and uh, thank you very much, Kevin. God, it's been fun tonight. You know? And I had free tickets tonight for the Hieroglyphics, uh, some group at the UC Theater, and I chose to be here. Well, gee, thank yeah. you. We really appreciate that, Phil. <laughs> yes. Anyway, that's it. Why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye to the folks out there in the television land there we go. I'll give a big wave goodbye, too. There they go, folks. There they go. Okay, that's it for our program for tonight. Let me get rid of these uh, these people, these fine people. The reason i got to get rid of them is so that I can make these Skype lines available for our next program, which is Jack Bishop and the Intersection. That's coming up next over GabNet. I will be here again tomorrow night if I don't die from this cold. Uh, and um, we'll be here at um, ten, right after D Damian Chaplin with the exchange at 9.30. We'll be here at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>